I, I don't do this to stroke my ego, you know. I know. Well, Try- you know, someone's got to stroke your ego, and that's where I come in. I come yeah. in, give you some of that vitamin, vitamin G, you know. For all my fellow creators that are vitamin G deficient, that's where I come in. You hop on the pod. The- <laughs> All right. I can go. Be, I can go all different ways. G. So you gotta be careful about your vitamin G. This this podcast might go might get weird. What's up, everyone? Welcome to another edition to the Rated G Podcast. I'm your host, G. Derado. If you are new here, welcome to the show. This is a podcast where I like to have honest. Uh, discussions, all things uh, revolving around art and creativity, and I often feature friends, local artists, creators, and small business owners to help promote their brand. And while doing so, we engage on some, um, you know, in-depth conversations about our craft and you know just all the insights on what goes into our craft and. Um, yeah, and we also talk about other uh, aspects in life. So if you enjoy this content and you want to support the podcast, please be sure to follow, subscribe, ring the notification bell. Uh, if you want to also uh, help support my artwork, uh, please do so by simply uh, subscribing to my YouTube channel and uh, just following me on social media. All right, and everything will be provided in the links below. And for everyone, who is tuning back in welcome back and thank you for your continued support now for everyone if uh you know for whatever duration of the time you are tuning in please feel free to leave a comment below to help out with the algorithm that always helps out and yes yeah, so this is a very last minute but exciting occasion uh this this man who is uh, joining me is no stranger to the podcast so uh Please welcome back the one and only Nick Mokoviak. So and, so and, and we have, we have, we have an audience member here. His name is Siler. And uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, don't worry, Nick. Don't, in, in the final cut, there'll be a, a, a huge applaud. Don't worry. I don't really care. At this I point. know you don't. <laughs> no, it's fine. I, I don't do this shit to stroke my ego, you know. I know. Well, Try- you know, someone's got to stroke your ego, and that's where I come in. I come yeah. in, give you some of that vitamin, vitamin G, you know, for all my fellow creators that are vitamin G deficient. That's where I come in. You hop on the pod. The- <laughs> all right. I it can go. Be- I can go all different ways, G. So you got to be careful about your vitamin G. This this podcast might go might get weird. I apologize. In I beg you. <laughs> you know, like the the last I I don't even know the last time I was on the on the show. I think the last time you were on had to been either. Uh, ooh, was it a bitch fest or was it a solo appearance? I, I, I think I, it was solo. I know it was before my daughter was born. Yeah, you know, it probably was a solo one then. Yeah. yeah, you know what? Yeah, because I I think I was trying to rally us together to do one more mm-hmm. Bitch Fest before the end of the year. Yeah, yeah, but you know, yeah. Hey, man, I'm I I I will. I'm gonna say this, man. I I, I do get excited. Uh, you know when you when you do pop in because uh, our our at least when it comes to you and I, uh, they're kind of not not sporadic, but they they are like almost like pop ups. Like, yeah, pretty much. Because again, like we can't read the shirt it says you can't scare me. I have two daughters. <laughs> two, I have two kids yeah. under under three years old. So I mean, right. y- you know, like which congrats by the oh, way. Th- thank you, thank you. It's so it's it's funny because everyone's like, oh, "How's the baby sleeping?" Like the baby sleeps well. It's the toddler who's not sleeping right now, and mm. it's funny too because it started like right on Christmas Eve. Actually, I remember that morning. You know, I'm watching the monitor here, and I see her like crawling out of her crib. I'm like, uh, "Oh, okay. we're switching you to a toddler bed today." Like, that's what we're doing uh, Christmas Eve because we have like the a converter, so it's like crib, toddler bed, and full size bed. So it's kind of a worthy investment. 
And then that was the start of just like three weeks of just no sleep where prior to that, you'd read her a book or two, you like rock her a bit, you put her down. She might cry for like 10, 15 minutes, but then she's out. Mm. You get the toddler bed. It became a fight every night. And I mean, when I mean a fight, I mean like picking, crying, screaming. Oh, yeah. And that's just me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, because like my job was after we would read books, because my wife would have would go feed, you know, the baby. I'm with my my oldest daughter, and it was from like seven fifteen to like nine o'clock. She would not go down. She would not sleep. She would cry. She would scream. She would run around the room, you know. And we were like trying to get her to go to sleep. Because we tried over the summer with another, with we we got her her own toddler bed and she didn't like what well, she liked it, but she didn't want to sleep in it. So yeah. we we're like, all right, you're going back in the crib. You're not ready for it yet. Mm. So it was just like three weeks of like be, me getting the shit kicked out of from to like nine o'clock at night. But then my wife and I we would tag team, so she would switch. Like she would go into Kenzie's room or or oldest daughter and sleep. On you know in the room with her usually either on the floor or we got smart and like took the toddler mattress from the other bed and put it on the floor so we could sleep and be comfortable. Yeah, I yeah. sleep in the bedroom with Robin or, or the, the baby. Then when Robin would wake up to feed like around one to three o'clock in the morning, we would then switch. I would go back into Kenzie's room. She so should come back into our bedrooms. We were doing that for three weeks, mm-hmm. and there were some you know some. Some of those days, actually, a lot of those days, I think our average sleep was like four or five hours. Mm. And then, you know, we went to the doctor like, what what the fuck? Like this, we're not like we were losing our minds. Yeah. So, um, you know, then throw in like the baby not sleeping either and not napping. And it, it was just it was leading to a lot of issues. Yeah. So they're like, the doctor was like, give her melatonin. We're like, OK. And that started to work a little bit, and that started to like get her a little bit more tired. And then, you know, we're also now like doing magnesium um, gummies with her too. Mm. But one night, it, it it started to work where like she would then settle quicker, where it would be like fifteen to twenty minutes. Then it was like okay, then she like not out. But then we would get to a stretch of like maybe two nights in her she would sleep through the night and then like the next three nights she wake up at like two o'clock in the morning mm. and it was like i'm going back to the room to sleep in the, in the on the floor with her yeah some nights she would sleep in our bed and but then it would take her like an hour to settle she's like kicking and like rolling we're like oh fuck this i'm just no like this is not working so yeah you know sleep on the floor yeah. and you know that that led to, <laughs> led to a lot of like you know back pain shoulder pain hip pain oh, yeah you know but yeah. I'm like, I'll take that, you know, and then have her sleep versus nobody getting sleep. So, Oof, yeah, right. We're sacrifice, sacrifice, sacrifices you got to make, you know. Yeah, you, I was just gonna being, a, <laughs> being a parent, you know, it's like yeah. the sacrifices. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I'm like, uh, I told my wife, I'm like, I'll, I have no problem sleeping back there. I got used to, I mean, I got used to just sleeping back there for, for like weeks on end. So, yeah you know and then they, they say like you know there's that sleep regression which she's going through right now and then when she starts um ki- not kindergarten preschool in a month there'll probably be a big change going from daycare to preschool then they're very excited and learning and mm. i'm like i'm just never gonna sleep again in my life <laughs> so, oh, yeah yeah then on you know so, so then on top of that you know, it hasn't been like a happy time because then, like, my father in law recently passed from cancer oh, yeah, to right. about three weeks ago. So right that, that that was yeah, and it came very quickly. And it's yeah. one of those things where like you start to you start thinking about like your your you know your end mm. because uh, I, I I don't I don't remember who said the quote, but it's like in this world nobody gets out alive. Mm. So then like. So you have to start putting together a will, uh, you know. It's, yeah. But it's like you know what, for, like for me, I don't want that mystery of like, God forbid, I go before my wife and my kids, and I don't have anything of like, 
okay, what does dad want? What does Nick want? You know, where does, does he want to be buried? Does he want to be cremated? Does he want to be planted in a tree? Does he want to become a bird? Like, what does he want to do? Mm. So all those things you have to like sit down and like think about and mm. put into, you know, put into writing and, and have that, you know, notarized or whatever so that you have something in place. So, you know, it gets you kind of thinking a little bit more of like mm. taking care of yourself you know, health wise. And it sucks that like, it takes an event like that in order for you to kind of yeah. bring back a bit. So I know like just like a small step is like, you know, doing you know, spiritless bourbon. There's no, <laughs> really there's, it's, it's not, I was, I'm like, is there non-alcoholic bourbon? And there is. That's, there's a whole market I, for this kind of stuff. I hear the uh, non-alcoholic beers are starting to like get better. Let and me tell you, that'd be great. But here, I, ha- I had non-alcoholic Guinness. I'm a big Guinness fan, and I could not tell the difference between the two. Oh, really? So yeah. it, it was still delicious. It was delicious. It was creamy. Oh, it, okay. it was frothy. You know, you have to have it cold. Yeah. You know, and and if you are discerning enough, you could probably you could you could taste a difference but it's like it's probably yeah, it's like getting... such a minimal difference right yeah minimal difference oh, you know? hey. okay you know. i was trying not to like oversell it so i don't yeah <laughs> but i i have heard you know uh yeah you know that the the, the non-alcoholic beer was like start to taste really good like yeah because like, it's, it's like, a whole yeah, it's right. a whole new market you know and that's something too like i know a lot you know you know, a lot of people in this world don't exactly, you know, aren't the church going type, but like for Lent, for being a, a decent Catholic, so I don't land totally in hell, but purgatory somewhere, then like <laughs> God and Satan can fight for me later on. I'm like, you know, one thing I give up alcohol because it's something that like, I, yeah. you know, like I need, a, my body needs a reset. So that's why I'm like, oh, I did it. I did sober October last year. Oh, and nice! I one of the things that I did was I tried out the non-alcoholic bourbon for the first okay. time. This one this is a Spiritless Seventy Four. It's the first time I've had it. I'm not really. It doesn't grab you because what a lot of these do for at least a bourbon is that they try to mimic like the burn of bourbon a- afterwards. Oh, so okay. they try to put in like different flavors. This one's just kind of flat, hmm. and it's funny. It's funny too because with all these, they're meant for mixers. You're not, not supposed to drink it straight or neat. It's supposed to be like mixed with like soda or uh, you know, <laughs> club soda, or whatever. So yeah. you read a lot of the reviews, you're like, oh, this tastes like shit. It's oh, you had it straight. I'm like, well, that's the problem. You're not supposed to drink it straight. It's a mixer. It, it even says it too. You know, for cocktails, that's what you're supposed to do, do with uh, this stuff. Because there's also like non-alcoholic, you know, tequila and rum. And gin and all that. Yeah. So, Interesting. You know, mo- mocktails, you know, that's what, mm. that's what they call. So I figure, like, you know, give it, a, I'll, I'll give this one a try. It's one's, why not? Then I, it's not, it's not good, but. Yeah. Well, I, if it makes you feel better, I'm drinking White Claw and it might as well be non alcoholic. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they're leftovers from a from a hangout the last weekend so I'm, it's just instead of i figure instead of i just keep smoking weed maybe i'll mix it up a little bit <laughs> no um yeah man i um you know yeah a lot's going on uh but like yeah almost, again i you know i'm i'm always excited when i hear from you especially when you want to throw down on the pod it, it, it means there's stuff going on in that dome so i'm curious is there anything in particular oh i mean there's there's always well this is also just a matter of time you know this is timing like you know you know like my wife went to game night with with, with the baby i'm okay. home with i'm home with kenzie she's i mean she's asleep right now luckily like i said like she went down really easy tonight <laughs> not so, but I, yeah but i'm still expecting like on the monitor for like her like open the door, yeah. you know. And there's some nights too. You know, I'll have the monitor next to me that has like the like the blue light on for for power or whatever. So there's a little bit of light in the room, and 
we close her door, but we don't shut it so that she can get out of her room. Mm. You know, because again, like she was having nightmares. Right. Like, well, there's no like, oh, we can get the mommy and daddy, whatever. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's been a couple of nights where I'm like, I'm sleeping, and it's like two or three in the morning, and you hear like, like a, oh and you see like this little body just oh, doing like this. Man. It's, I'm already thinking of like the movies. Yeah, it's like Michael Myers and, and Jason Voorhees just like staring at you. Like, oh, that's just Kenzie. She comes over with her little, with her little um, her lovey, you know, and she just walks around. She goes, "Mommy up, Daddy up, okay." Yeah. You put her in bed, and she's like, "No, no, no!" I'm like, all right, you're going back. You're going back to your room. We're not doing uh, this. <laughs> but yeah, or or like sometimes it's like like five in the morning. You're just about. You're like, all right, I'm about ready to get up now. And she just like runs in the room, you're like, uh, oh, I'm up now. <laughs> so oh yeah. yeah. I've uh you know it's funny because like I have trouble like falling asleep sometimes. And uh but it when it comes to waking up like that, I I don't know. Like you would think I was a light sleeper, but I don't know, I can sleep through some things, but it just seems like I mean, it's probably like my body clock too, and like I just I don't know. The second I'm up, I'm up. Yeah, that, that's me too. Like, yeah. like there are some nights I'm like, all right, I'm gonna wake up at like you know five forty five, and I'm like it's like five ten, and I'm like, fuck it, I'm up. Mm. Like, <laughs> like I'm up. When I, I'm not going back to sleep. Even when I get up to you know to take a piss or something, like I have to make sure I get like barely any light in my eyes otherwise i'm wide awake mm-hmm. it's it's just i don't know I, i'm i find myself astonished sometimes because uh, you know not that like our bathroom's like real close to our bedroom and i don't know just you know in that in those like i don't know 15 10 steps i'm like practically awake by the time i'm at the toilet and i'm like oh no <laughs> it's like it's gonna be so and i got like and then just things start playing in my head and it's just like it's a whole it's just like a whole battle to fall back asleep. But waking up is never an issue. Like I always wake up before my alarm. Um, but um yeah, I don't know. Yeah, well, even like with sleep now too, like I have to put on like breathe right strips at night and like do like flow nase spray. My oh, wife was like, I'm getting concerned about your breathing. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I know I have some issues like that too. Um, I just, I don't know, to avoid having to go to those things, I just try to like <laughs> practice <laughs> breathing exercises to make it more natural. Yeah, well, I went to an ENT doctor yeah. and she was like, your left, you know, septum's a little bit deviated, but otherwise, you know, just, you know, keep doing the, the nose strips. Yeah. She gave me like the prescription for Flonase or whatever it is. You know, and it's like, oh, you know, she didn't say it, but it's like, you know, if you, you know, drop a little bit of weight and not drink as much, it that definitely helps too. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, yes. And water is wet and the sky is blue and grass is green and the sun's hot. <laughs> yes. You, you know, like, any, like breathing exercises, like just, you know, five seconds in and out the nose. Stuff. Yeah. I do that. You know, especially like at, even like with nights, because um, it's like that. My problem is like I can't fall asleep, mm. which is odd because okay, like, like during the day I can nap, no problem, but like when it comes to time for nighttime, they actually fall asleep. Same thing, like my brain's just playing in like sixteen different things at the same time, mm. so I have to take like Unisom tablets to fall asleep because it helps me, you know. And I also take that like usually like an hour before I go to sleep. Yeah. So then when I'm ready to sleep. I'm ready to sleep. Yeah, for a while we were eating. We we were eating um the the uh not the magnesium, but the you you just we were just talking about it. The gummies to help you fall asleep with the M word, melatonin. Thank you. Yeah, melatonin. And uh, but after a while, like we started getting well, my wife was getting more cautious about it because then, like you know. I forget, like, you know, if you rely on those, like, too much, like, it, it kind of fucks you up a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, we just, we haven't been taking them lately. Honest, for me, and, then I, you know, I've, you know, you know, I know you don't smoke weed, but 
like it just for me it's actually come down to like if i can like have a few puffs before bed that actually makes a difference <laughs> yeah a lot of it's psychological too like your body produces melatonin naturally yeah so. and like yeah because like otherwise if i can't calm the brain down um yeah that's it like i'm just gonna be i'm just gonna be laying there yeah, and then by, by the time I fall asleep, it's like two o'clock in the morning, and that's when Kenzie wakes up. I was just gonna say, <laughs> just, "Dear Daddy." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Shit. All right. Yeah. What else? So yeah, what's 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 going on? You know, oh, I don't, life, oh, let's so. let's see here. Besides, like no artwork being done because you have no time to make anything because your kid yeah. doesn't let you make anything because she doesn't sleep at night. Um, I will nah, say, I, I believe there there was there's hope though. You know what it is? You got to get past. There's oh like, yeah, mo- obstacles you got to get past, or like even like even yeah. the age of your daughter when she starts understanding more things. I'm sure you'll have. A bigger and bigger window as time goes on. Oh yeah, it's just you have to get past it. You know that's what it is. You know you have to get past it, and eventually, yes. I think you it know would... you're both doing it together. You're both cre- making. You know, yeah, she's gonna be my, my little you know shop steward, <laughs> making sure. To, like, go get daddy's eraser, Kenzie. You know, <laughs> which she does anyway. I mean, she yeah. grabs all my crap anyway, and I'm like, where's my pencil? And it's like in her crib, <laughs> you know, or like. No, she likes grabbing all all the toys off the mm. she was daddy up. I'm like, up, oh, you can go shopping now. I'm like, well, all right, which toy are you gonna take today? You know, yeah. take the all right, just take the five dollar Godzilla toy. Don't take the hundred and twenty dollars. <laughs> no, you're gonna take the hundred and twenty one. Okay, yeah, go ahead, play with it. It's fine. Uh, Breaks so whatever. So art wise, it's been interesting because I had all these plans to do you know a lot of things this year, and as always, it falls to shit. You know because you know. Nice life you know you know and i rather provide experiences you know good experiences for my you know for my kids versus like being selfish all the time of like mm. daddy wants to draw you know and at some point i would like to take classes again because it helps me get out of the house because mm. that was a discussion i had with my wife i'm like i'm always in the house like i'm always stuck like i can't go anywhere all my friends are either like they're married and have young kids so they're always doing stuff or like they're out of state so i've been basically home and i haven't really socialized and, or done anything and it's like it, i was telling them like it's just like driving me nuts mm-hmm. because like this is my socializing right here or like at work and there's uh, that if you want to get into like a whole diatribe about stuff i'll get started with like teaching and like that'll that'll be it it'll be downhill from there but <laughs> that's been in my mind for a long time now but i was like like breaking down and saying like i have like no real friends now which mm-hmm. is as you get older it kind of it plays into that fact of like you only really have like one or two friends you actually see and talk to on a regular basis you know especially in like if you have a family you know and your kids grow older you're going to do more things with your kids like you're going to go to soccer practice or scouts or competitions or whatever you know like it would be nice to like do like a bowling league like i did you know my friend and my brother years ago but that's that's when you had time and also those leagues are like that nine o'clock at night and i'm like i'm usually asleep by that so you know like those things will eventually will come back but i was like i need to get out of the house and do something my wife was like yeah you do you know because like me going out of the house is going to work going for the kids and or like going like food shopping that's it that's basically the extent of that you know and i understand like that's what it is right now because i have two young ones once they're older it's going to be different but you know with with artwork and projects like yeah there are a lot of things that were kind of planned and didn't happen Mm. But uh, about a month, about a month or two ago, my coworker was like, "Do you want to write a picture book?" You know, I'm like, "There's a bear shit in the woods. <laughs> Let's do this." <laughs> so we've actually been working on that for the last, I would say, like month and a half, two months. Okay, nice. Yeah, we're like, we sat and kind of brainstorm because she wanted to pick my brain because 
this all goes into like the whole teaching diatribe I'm going to go into in a little bit, which I'm just going to take over your show and that's going to be it. And people are going to be like, this has nothing to do with art, but whatever. <laughs> Fuck you. Um, but like it started off just like brainstorming ideas of like, she's like, well, I read because she has a young daughter too. Mm-hmm. That's like in between uh, Kenzie and Robin. So, but she was saying like, you know, I'm reading all these like animal books. You want to do an animal book? I'm like, sure, whatever. You know, like all oh, do all these weird animals, but you can kind of tell like you're really not into it. I'm not into it. You're not into it, but you're just kind of doing it to kind of get the process going. Yeah. So and then she had like this, you know, document or uh, Google Google Docs and Google Sheets of um different ideas and concepts, and one of them was like different emotions and feelings and i'm like this is an idea we can go along with so that's kind of what we're doing right now and it came along pr- pr- pretty quickly and it's like come together like very fast so like we were discussing earlier today like finding a publisher finding agents kind of putting getting a, a timeline for like putting the book dummy together and going over character designs so that's been pretty exciting and, and especially like to have someone who is driven to do it is really refreshing because I've worked on projects with people who are like, yeah, you know, you know how artists are. Yeah, we'll get it done whenever. Yeah, there's no real due date or deadline. And it's like two years later, you're like, what the fuck? Yeah. You know, this time, like she's kind of kicking my ass and be like, all right, like the draft, like she's written the book. And like the and a G, let me tell you, like when I read the first draft of it, I'm like, this is solid, like this is good, and that got me going, like, oh, let's kind of do this and let's do that, and like let's, you know, we kind of bounce ideas back and forth off each other, and that's kind of been like the the main drive for me is like, okay, I have homework to do of like let's get let's iron out some character designs and let's start kind of doing what's called a picture dummy or a book dummy, which is kind of like bigger thumbnails so that if you go to a, to an agent or a publishing house um you can show them kind of what the finished product would kind of look like on a smaller yeah. scale right. so i believe these do they still call them ash cans and comics anymore i don't even know but that's kind of what it is it's kind of like it's a okay. it's a small condensed version of your, of your book okay some are like the are like the entire book on a smaller scale some are just a few pages but that kind of gives like an like a publisher or an agent idea of what the book's going to look like. So they go, oh, like you actually know what you're doing. And, you know, giving ourselves like actual due dates and deadlines, like let's get this done. Let's start pushing this out. And, I'm, you know, we've been kind of just feeding back and forth. Like she's doing a lot of inquiry work. And I've kind of been my experience being with a picture group years ago. Of like, well, this is what we talked about and this is what we were you were told what to do, what not to do. And it's been really good so far. I, like, I'm not going to jinx it by saying like what it is exactly. Cause you know how that goes, Yeah, yeah. but I have a pretty good feeling about it. Okay. So, I mean, maybe, I don't know by the end of the year, that's, that's pushing it. Yeah. But I would say definitely within the next 12 to 18 months, there's going to be something out. Okay, cool. Yeah. Nice. So that's kind of, it, it kind of pushed all the things I had aside to it, but I'm like, you know what? this is viable this is um something i can sink my teeth into and something that i feel has a lot of legs to it yeah and also i mean you know like one day your daughter both your daughters will be reading it you know that's (laughs) the idea it's just it's that's that that's the idea it's interesting how things kind of fall into place there in that regard it's all just serendipity you know it's just a lot of being in the right place, the right time, or just yeah. like having to, you put things out in the universe and it, it comes back, back to you, you know, it, it responds back to you at some point. Yeah. So it's like, gotta put positive energy out there, of, you know, instead of always being so negative, which I'm about to do. Uh, <laughs> so <laughs> about, to, about to just, we're, we're just on the right track, on man. the right track. And I'm going to take a big, nasty, messy oh, shit all over it. Oh boy, what what so I, I know you know when it comes to like the to the show, I always mention like 
the teaching shit. I know people probably get tired of it, but <laughs> let me just get this off my chest here. Okay. So with with education, you, you want to talk to miserable people, talk to teachers. They're they're Ooh. universally miserable. And it there's all different reasons why. And a lot of people think it's because of the kids. Oh, it's this. And I'm like, it's a lot of things. So yeah. now it, it's funny how like <clears throat> at the beginning of the pandemic, we were like, we were heroes for about about 15 minutes. Yeah. Oh, teachers should get raises, give you know, oh, oh, they're 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 the best, you know. But then when it came time to go back to work, it's like, fuck you, you entitled lazy piece of shit. You need to go back to school because my kid needs to go back to school because I'm tired of babysitting them. Yeah. And you know, I was talking to one, to another coworker, you know, uh, just asking like, what's changed? Because that's everyone says like, you know, ed- education is different. It's changed, and it's like what's changed and it's like hard to put into words but it's a lot of different things so first the kids are different it's not a big reason why people are miserable as te- as edu- you know as teachers mm. a lot of people outside of it think that's the main reason why it's not not a big reason mm-hmm. but you have you know kids now who are so influenced by social media Mm. TikTok, Instagram, not so much Facebook, but you know YouTube, and I, what we've done with our kids is like instead of like in Japan where they teach independence and self reliance, like when they go to school, they take their shoes off, they you know they wash the, the dishes for after their meals, they help clean the hallways, they have self-reliance and responsibility and ownership of their actions mm. whereas here in in the u.s like we don't celebrate you know being individual we're celebrating selfishness mm. kids are selfish they're not acting like they're not independent because they can't do shit mm. they're selfish because they want to do things that service them they get them popular get them likes get them noticed get them attention doesn't matter what kind of attention it is positive negative they want attention because they're seeing what people are doing like say on tiktok where they're doing some ridiculous challenges uh last year it was like removing the urinals from the wall in the bathroom (laughs) you know like that kind of stupid shit but they see that it's getting clicks it's getting likes it's getting comments feeds into the into their dopamine so then now they have to do it they film themselves doing it you know yeah you know you start seeing too you know where you know like we're like we're rewarding this kind of negative behavior Mm. you you know because we talk about the algorithm that's what it feeds into here you know kids want that reward they want that dopamine hit i think the algorithm is definitely is like the catalyst i think it's just something about like people because like you know it's like the whole like you know we reward you the the people that misbehave are rewarded you know yeah. kind of like that catch me outside girl she's fucking like oh yeah famous and like she's a millionaire. millionaire yeah and uh you know because of all the attention she got under and, and i'm i did just you know that i'm sure has escalated to the nth degree with yeah, with all the social media now, because it's just that's all it is. Kids are like easily exposed to it. Yeah. And, yeah. I mean, uh, you ask kids what they want to be these days. They want to be influencers. Yeah. You know, like that's that's what they see. That's what they see. Like a guy like Mr. Beast who owns a private. He owns an island somewhere, yeah. you know, like you have. But the thing, too, that they don't realize is that Mr. Beast grinded his way to it. Yeah. Like he, like he's very intense about what he does with his end product. Mm hmm. Kids, you know, they want the reward without the effort, which I think we've, we've, I think we've hit upon that before at some point in one of these shows. I don't remember which one, mm. but you know, so you have these kids who, you know, a lot of them have not the not the best home life situations. Where it's funny too, because like where I work, we have the two ends of town, like the town that I, the end that I work in, the kids and the families a lot more affluent. But the parents just pass them off from one thing to another. 
like, okay, after school, you're going to Kuman. After Kuman, you're going to dance practice. And then after dance practice, you're going to scouts. And after scouts, you're going to swim. You know, after swim, you're going to, you know, you know, on Saturday, you have your math tutor. Then on, you know, Saturday afternoon, you have your reading tutor. And then you have AP tutoring, you know, on Sunday. You know, and then Monday, you know, you're going to art class and you're going to your your clarinet lessons. It's so regimented to them, like the kids are being passed from adult to adult to adult to adult to adult without having a family structure. Mm. And the other end of town, the, end, the, the side that I grew up on, you have a dissolved family structure where there's one parent or there's two parents, but they're not parenting, you know where there's no there's there's no sense no sense of structure no sense of um family and you have these kids who are just kind of raising themselves mm. and they're raising themselves on their phones mm. because they want that kind of parental figure so you, you're dealing with those kind of issues you know, these kids are coming in and as teachers now like now we're taking on the responsibility of like okay we're not just teaching them now we have to raise them instill morals and values into them teach them right from wrong and in some school districts have to feed them you know breakfast and lunch and snack make sure they have clothing make sure that they're that they're socially taken care of and it's fucking exhausting yeah you know and then with all the you know, so then with the kids especially now with how crazy our, our society is you know when it comes to like political values and morals and all that mm. you have administrators who don't want any repercussions or or blowback from the parents for anything so there's basically no rules kids can do whatever the hell they want to mm. for example in one school there was a fourth grade boy who more or less assaulted another a fourth grade girl by punching her in the face four times and other kids saw this in the hallway right and that boy was not suspended no detention went to school the next day so if you're if you're a kid and you see that and you see that this that this child has no consequences for them what does that tell you you could do whatever the fuck you want. Yeah. Oh, why not now? Now just like choke someone out in the middle of the, in the middle of the hallway. No teacher's gonna touch them because mm. that uh, you open up a whole can of worms there if an adult touches a child. Yeah. Even if, even if they're killing someone, you just it's like just gotta let it go. Mm. You know, administrators don't want any repercussion on them either. They don't want any 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 dirt on their hands. And then you have a lot of kids who are very smart too, and they start playing the different cards. They pl- they'll play the race card, they'll play the mm-hmm. bigot card, they'll play the sexist card, they'll play the prejudice card. They have no problem doing that. So their like, administrators are like, "All right, yeah, fine, you're good." You know, there's always an excuse. This child comes from a broken home. This one only has one one parent. This one has you know, they're a they're raised by grandma. You know, this one is emotionally neglected at home there's always some reason and it's like everyone's got shit that they got they got to deal with everybody does yeah but when you don't have consistent follow through and you don't have some set of structured enforceable discipline and consequences you're going to have this this fallout in society i was offered a middle school position at the other end of town and I said, no, thank you. Even though I would love to go to middle school and high school, this one middle school, there was a reportedly there was there was a, a child walking around with his phone, punching other kids and not getting in trouble for it. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. So like when you hear about stuff like that, you go, why the hell do I want to get into this field? Yeah. Oh. You know, there's no accountability for anything. And then you're like, well, that's the kids. The biggest issue is really all is like politics. We're just political pawns now. That's all we are. Mm. You know, and 
you have both these political parties that use us and move us around their chessboard for their needs. You know, you have one side that tells us that we're selfish, entitled assholes that are teaching our kids CRT and blah, blah, blah. You have this other side that, that tells us, you know, oh, no, these teachers are terrible. They're, you know, they're not putting their morals on, on the kids. They're not supposed to. And then re- the reality is they don't give it. They don't give a shit about you. Mm. They just kind of move you around the board for the, for their needs. And then, you know, once once they have their needs to check me for you, you're done. Damn. You know, and then, you, you know, like our work becomes more and more statistics. It's more clerical work. It's more data driven where you have to do more tests and more tests and more tests. It's like for what? The, the test, you know, like you don't need to test every year these for these kids. Three years, four years is fine. Not every fucking year, you know. And you have to keep track and make sure that these they're meeting. You know they're on level or they're here, and you can't hold kids back either because that's you know emotionally damaging and demoralizing. So you fail them forward. Kids in for, kids in third grade can read on a kindergarten level. Ah, fuck it, put them in fourth. It's fine. Mm. He needs all that. Oh, that kid needs help. Okay, so he, if he qualifies for for reading and in, in, in math intervention, oh no, but we're gonna pull those interventionists so they can sub in the classrooms because we don't have enough subs because we don't pay enough for the subs to be in the class. So now the kid is falling behind because the school district can't open you know can't open the wallet enough to pay for people to sub the classes when the teachers are out. And then teachers don't want to be out because they get penalized for being out, even though you have all these sick days and personal days. Oh we have to God. prove if you're sick or, 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 or not sick. You know, And they question you, of, like, if you take a personal day, what you're doing on your personal day, well, it's fucking personal. That's why it's called a personal day. Yeah. So if you're, if you're this kid, you know, at 22 years old and you're going for education, you hear about all this, you're like, why do, why do people yeah. do this? And especially, like, in, I don't know how it is in different states, but in New Jersey, depending on when you're hired, and what year you're hired depends on when you retire. Because I was hired later in the game in New Jersey in what they call a tier five, which means I have to work 30 years plus I have to be 65 to get a full pension and benefits. Oh. Who in the fuck wants a 65 year old in their classroom? Nobody. Nobody. So then you perfectly start driving these people out of the profession, good people out of the profession, because you don't want to pay them. And you're not attracting the best talent. And then on top of that, you have administrators when they do observations, you know, and evaluations are purposely marking a lot of teachers low, the demoralizing the teachers, and then having these teachers have to argue and fight for their score to improve. And sometimes they do, and sometimes they don't. And you're like, who the fuck wants this? Like, we're adults with with advanced degrees, bachelors, masters, you know, sometimes PhDs, multiple certificates in, in different subject areas, and you're treated just like a like a like a fucking plug, you know? Like it's just it's terrible. And every time I see a for a former student come in and they want a student in their student teaching i pull them aside and I'm like are you sure you want to do this mm. you know like if it's your passion then go for it but i'm just telling you here's the reality because i don't want you in like five ten years you know quit because i've seen good teachers quit yeah which is demoralizing and I've, and again this isn't something has like you know bitter teachers talking like you talk to anyone First year teacher, fifth year teacher, 15 years in, 20 years in, they'll all pretty much say the same thing. Yeah. And you're just like, and I'm sitting there going, like, what am I doing? Why am I doing this? Besides, you know, the maybe the honest answer is it it provides for my family. Yeah. That's why I do it. And also as an illustrator, I knew it was going to be feast or famine. And I kind of liked having a steady paycheck and health benefits and, and a pension. That was that's a nice appeal, you know. Yeah, I know a lot of people are not going to say that. They're like, "Well, because I want to teach the kids." No, fuck them. Yeah, I'm <laughs> doing this for the steady paycheck. Yeah, you know, but I can't imagine. But but then like, 
you have all this bitterness, right? But all the, everything's going on. But then you have like your former students come back and they're like, you're my favorite teacher. And you're like, you're the reason why I draw. You're like, God damn it. This is why I do this job. <laughs> you know, like even, even that, it, it kind of, even whatever's left of, of my heart, you go, man, you just pulled at it enough. Or I'm like, man, that's why. Yeah. You know, that's why you do this. And that's, and that's why, the, you know, a lot of teachers, they, they, they suck it up because mm. they have that impact, you know? And again, for someone like me who sees hundreds of kids every year, it's hard to gauge your impact on, on kids, you know, cause I don't see them every day. I don't teach them every day. I teach them once a week for 45 minutes. But then they'll come back, you know, when they're in high school and college, you're like, this is the, re- you're the reason why I'm doing this. And I'm like, well, I'm sorry. <laughs> Well, you know, man, am I imagining this? <clears throat> I keep thinking that I saw a glimpse of like a headline, something about like, you know, clat. There will be at some point there will be courses on like social media use and all that stuff because everything is digital now. Yeah, um, um I would not be surprised. I mean, you gotta think too. Like when I, I was, a- it should have happened. <clears throat> it should have happened. Right, a long time ago. If right, we, if right. we'd known better, of course. Ed, right? Educate well, education is always behind, always behind on that. Like when AOL stuff. was around, we probably should have started. Like, <laughs> well, you got you got to remember, you got to remember too. You know, like in the mid, in the early to mid nineties, like when I was in middle school, and I took computer class, had to learn how to type on a computer, you know how to. You know, not even downloading a file, like how to insert a, a floppy disk or a yeah. disk, you know, into yep. the computer, how to print something. Because, mm-hmm. you know, it seems like a whole foreign concept, but like 25, 30, 25 years ago, not everybody had a home computer. Nope. Like that's, uh, it's mind boggling. Yeah. To, to like, I remember saying, like, I had two computers. People were like, Are you I rich? I'm like, just going to say, if like, you had two, you were. You oh were my God. Two. Yeah. You know, <laughs> and, and you had dial up, you know, a 56K modem. Yeah. Holy shit. On both computers. <laughs> yeah. You know, you were flying high, you know, but yeah. with how, techno- how technology is and how much has advanced, you know, over the last, even just in the last five years, it's insane. Mm hmm. Like can you, I can't I can't imagine, you know, like if if we if I time traveled back to my my senior self twenty one years ago, saying, okay, Nick, everything you ever do will be on this, yeah, you know, like your camera, your navigation, your email, your drawing, how you talk to people. Shit. It's science fiction, you know. If I could, if I could go back in time, I would probably, I would probably go to one point where I was trying to watch porn through the squiggles, and I would show them and be like, "Dude, soon you'll be able to see that in an instant." <laughs> like, yeah, and for and time. for free. Yeah, for free. For free. For free. And for then free. Just, like, disappear. <laughs> I know you wouldn't even like have to like go into like the bathroom with like your dad's Playboy anymore. You could just. <laughs> You find whatever German fetish porn you're into and watch it instantaneously. It's kind of very scary how that is. But yeah, yeah. it's just and then getting into like the whole AI thing too, but reading more into that, it's like oh yeah. It's it's very scary. It's very scary and it's it's, it's concerning it's, for sure. It very it very much is. And I could tell you like the the, the uh, concept art field is gonna be decimated. There's gonna be nobody in concept art. Oh yeah, I know. Oh, I, AI. That's been my argument because, um, yeah, like I, I'm trying to see like all the sides I can see about it, right? Right. All the good and all the bad. Because like I, I have one, you know, there's like one positive outlook I had about it, and that's like it. It is regarding concept art. Now, the thing is that does take away that job title away from people right. takes that opportunity away from a lot of people. So that's the, the, you know, that's what sucks, but I, you know, you know, everyone was so quick to be like, you know, they would put up that anti AI art mm-hmm. and like, I totally get it. Obviously I'm an illustrator yeah. too, but you, you know, the it's, it's, it's a, it's a tough uh, pill to swallow because this is something that, 
like if this is a fight you want to pick, I think this is one you're not going to really win unless some major grid fucking drops or something that Kurt just fucks up the whole AI system or something, you know, something that would happen in the movies, I feel like. Right. Like we're not going to be able to really win. like AI is like here to stay. Yeah. You know? It's yeah, and there was um so I make peace with it is what I'm saying. I just, right, right. I change anything. Yeah, I think I also got... won't use it. Let me point that out too. Like, I my my one of my pushbacks is like I don't I don't necessarily fully subscribe people using AI art and make money off of that because that's that's where I'm like, all right, what you know because you know how it's generated and oh you know all of like everyone's like all the billions of reference photos and whatnot you know so like i understand that aspect so like like if someone can justify making money off of using ai art like uh you know that's where i'm like kind of shaky on that. yeah i i know one of the things that was discussed was you know artists getting some kind of credit or some kind of royalty you know, if if their work is, you know, used in AI, which that's going to be very hard to start tracking. Like, yeah, I mean, it's essentially like NFTs. Like, you you almost have to like, right, right, know, process it as like, yeah, like this is my thing, and sure, like you can use it as a reference, but if there, it just gets really squirrely. <laughs> right, and I think what's what scares artists now with AI, whereas like. You, then you have, you have like the the normies who are like well there's no different from like you know photoshop and whatever else but it's like well here's the thing when it comes to technology cuz you know i'm sure artists if we had this in the 1870s were freaking out over the photograph over the photography and the camera right right photography's going to all no there's going to be no more realism no more photorealistic artists anymore it's all it's all dead now mm. which is why you had like the impressionist the post impressionist the, the fauvist like you had all those people, you know, all of a sudden come in and start doing things that the camera couldn't do. Yeah. And obviously, you know, we're almost 200 years removed from, from the camera becoming, you know, viable to obviously realism in painting hasn't gone away or in drawing or anything else. Right. And it's the same thing with Photoshop, same thing with the airbrush. Oh my God, it's going to take away artists' jobs. And it's in it for a while, it certainly did. But I think the difference with like, let's just say like the camera and the airbrush and Photoshop is that they were tools. The artist still had to use that tool to make it work. Yeah. Right. Like you still had, the tool was used to make an end result. It was used to render basically. Okay. You know, like you still like, I still had to go and either like using a tablet, a touch screen, like if I was doing Photoshop physically manipulate the material myself yeah. to create the artwork you know clicking if i was using a filter click on the filter click on the layers change the layer you know multiply it change it to you know the gossip yeah. blur and all that kind of shit like there was still the the artist was still involved with the process you still had to be involved with creating the art right even like all the decision making like right describing right. Like you have to make all those decisions, decisions. like am i going to use this brush this palette you know Right. The, the artist's hand was still there. Yeah. With AI, what's the scary part to me is that it removes that mm -hmm. and it creates the rendered finished work just by typing in a few prompts and that's it. Yeah. That's the part I think is scary. And yep. that's only going to get better over time. So, like, obviously, now people are laughing at like the people, like the Mona Lisa yeah. with like seven fingers and like three eyes and whatever. Yeah. But that's gonna change. Oh yeah, it's, it's like still at an infant state, and that's that's the the alarming part is that, like you know, yeah, we we laugh at the fact they can't make hands and some of the uh, and you know the anatomy can be off. But I mean, the fact that how you know what they're able to accomplish right now at this state is really alarming. You know, right. you got the uh, AI, not in just illustration, but you got. The, the writing, you know, with the chat, 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 GPT, right? Yeah. Um, you know, and uh, 
what else? Then you got the photos, and then I saw an article about like a fake. It was like an AI generated uh, news like cast, like a yeah. news thing, and uh, you know, it's just and again, it's it's at a very novel state, and you know, once the bugs are fixed, like it's you know, I, I don't I'm just concerned about the usage of it. You know, I think. You know, a history repeats itself when we find something that can can really benefit in a great way. I mean, <laughs> I hate to be real corny about it, but, you know, with great power comes great responsibility. Yeah. You know, it really applies here because it's like we have this very powerful tool, but I mean, it can it can really do a lot of fucked up shit if it's not used right. And. I mean, it just creates more questions on like, all right, how do you regulate stuff so that uh, people's rights aren't even, you know, yeah, infringed right. upon? Yeah. It's, it's gonna, it's gonna get scary, and it's gonna keep, just, like I said, it's gonna keep getting better and better. Where you won't be able to tell the difference between the original and the AI. Yeah, you won't be you able know, the, to. The aging, the aging. I, I saw our. I read parts of an article with Keanu Reeves talking about it because he has like a con he has like a a thing in his contract about um like using his features for like I guess these sort of purposes, like using his face, you know, to deep fake or you know, so unless you know like he it has to be him, like they can't fuck with that. So he has like this weird clause with his contract and you know, I'm like that's gonna be the future. Like uh, celebrities are gonna have to have like these, you know, these things that read like you know you can't you can't use any of my likeness <laughs> without my say so. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like you're gonna have to put all these clauses in their contracts and make sure that you know, like you can't you can't use anything for me from any point in my life. But it's scary, right? Because like you, you can create music that way right uh and then even like voice generation like you know i'm sure you get the ai to you know say some shit in someone else's voice you know a you know a dead celebrity perhaps mm -hmm. you know it's yeah again it's just you know i don't know but it's just i again like going back to like the people that were posting like the anti-ai thing it's like what is that really gonna do <laughs> i hate to be that guy but it's right. like i just feel like i you know it's not it's not gonna do much you know because again excuse me um a normal person is gonna be like uh, yeah i don't get it you know or like if you're a novelist and you're a comic book writer or whatever yeah you want to make it visual you don't have to pay an artist. You just have to pay for the software and you've got access to thousands upon thousands of artists' style at hand. You just got to type in, you know, if you're doing a comic book, you could just type in John Romita senior superhero comic book and it will spit something out that will look just like John Romita's work. Yeah. You know, and it's, it's something that's like, we will have to eventually, you know, face with. And it's funny too, because I was saying to, one of my coworkers about like getting back into illustration, you know, before the whole AI thing was kicking off. I'm like, yeah, people seemingly really still want like handmade stuff. Yeah. They'll want drawings and paintings and sculptures and prints that were done, you know, by the human hand, even like, again, like not even digital stuff. They want to see like, Oh, they want an oil painting. You mm -hmm. know, they want, you know, a, a shirt that was made with screen, you know, screen printing or with a, a linoleum block, or they want a drawing in graphite. They want a, an oil pastel, you know, drawing. They want those things that were done by hand. It was starting to turn the corner, and then AI kind of kicked in and kind of threw everything all over the place. And you're like, yeah, uh, it's just harder to find. Like you have to just sort of dig deeper. Or fetch the bait out further to to grab the the real, uh, you know, art lovers and enthusiasts. Because mm -hmm. I've I've realized that here too, like, you know, it's I was having this discussion earlier, um, with a, like another vendor, and uh, you know, like it took me this long, but I'm finally starting to realize, sort of like the best ways to make money at certain events because, 
you know, it, it's over here. It, it's saturated with pop up markets and all these small events. And, you know, like I've realized, like, <clears throat> I'm doing these markets. I'm I'm better off just selling like my stickers and prints as opposed to selling original mm -hmm. art. Even yeah. the small like all my small pieces, they're still kind of pricey, but I don't even like expect to sell those unless I'm at like a more focus, you know, like if it's an art festival, it's like a bigger event, then I I tend to do better selling original pieces. But I'm learning as I do more of these events, like, all right, this is this is what sells like these people. These are the these are the type of shoppers that come here, you know, like it's it's tricky. <laughs> it yeah, I know. That's why I've like stepped back. I, last year was the first year since 2008. I didn't do any type, any type of show. Yeah. And honestly, I thought I was going to miss it. And parts of it I do. But I'm like, no, I don't really I don't miss like driving to the places setting up finding where your table is you don't have a yeah. table you don't have enough chairs or you know you don't have a tablecloth you don't have enough singles you know for change and <laughs> you know you always feel like you don't have enough product and then you're always forgetting something you're always forgetting something and then you realize like you ain't selling shit anyway so <laughs> it's like why am i worried about like not having like my little sketch cards when like nobody's buying anything or yeah. or like you know, like you have a show, let's say that you do a show this weekend and all they're buying is like, you know, five by seven prints. Yeah. You're like, oh shit, this is doing <laughs> doing good. So then you like double down and you make new five by seven prints. Uh yeah. in addition to like the stock you're trying to replenish, you yeah. go to the next show and you don't sell anything. <laughs> yeah, it's been there a bunch of times. Right? And then like <laughs> you know, the like that show, they want all original artwork. So you're like, all right, I have to bring more original artwork. Maybe you go to the next show, and it's like yeah. all they want big size prints, and this they, <laughs> these people want like comic books, and then these people want stickers, these people want bookmarks. So like, yeah. you're know, having all this stock of shit, and then you get to another show, and it's and they want something else, <laughs> or like, can I take a picture? To, oh, can I use my phone to take a picture of your print? I'm like, no, you can pay me the five bucks that I'm charging for it. You know, <laughs> you know, I've had that happen a few times. Yeah. You know. Like, how much did you spend on your cosplay? About $500? I'm like, that's why you don't have enough money to buy a $5 print, you know? Because I know it costs 40 bucks to get in the door, and you and I know how much that sandwich costs you're eating right now, but you don't have 5 bucks to buy a fucking print. If you got $15 I'm, to buy some cheap-ass hamburger, doesn't taste that good? Okay, fine, whatever. I'm what actually glad I didn't do that many, like, I mean, I didn't really do any cons, but, uh, like, I don't know, like, I, I never got to go that deep into like the comic book scene i've always yeah, done like the flea markets yeah but I mean, you know, not that i'm saying i don't they're all they're really all the same G. They, they really are the same but i'm just but i like you know i mean yeah like like you're saying like when you got like cosplayers coming up and not wanting to spend the money for like any of your artwork where when they've like spent all this money on their sh like to get the tickets to get tickets for the damn event hotel the hotel all the other expenses that they've you know piled up to get to that event like i don't know i'm just saying like you know at least i guess doing the smaller events you know that if there was a cover charge it was like ten dollars <laughs> like, like i i feel like i i could I can see myself being a lot more bitter if, you know, if I had done a lot more of the uh, like comic book conventions, like if I did more of those comic book shows, yeah. because I only done a couple of them. And that was when I was like, really like, you know, I really need to make some money. And I knew that was a free spot. So, yeah. Right, but right. even those, I really didn't do well, you no. know, like I was lucky to make a sale. Um, right. Right. There's, there's but, time. There's even just times too where you're like, why am I doing this? Yeah, I, you know, and even like comic shows, like the whole, I don't, I don't even know what I would sell, because, like for example, I did uh Monster Mania a couple years ago, like oh perfect, I got a whole bunch of monster stuff, a bunch of Godzilla things, Universal stuff, you know, Frankenstein, Dracula. You know, I had a you know day of the dead thing. It was awesome. 
Then saw a fucking horror print. Yeah. You know what it sold? Captain America punching it in the face. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so you know. It, yeah, I try to stay. I mean, I'm going to be doing a new round of like some fan art and pop art, but I really like I I make sure it's more of a rare occasion to do like a spree of the like that type of art yeah. i really try to avoid doing a, a lot of fan art stuff unless i'm just doing it for self-indulgence like daily sketches or something right but yeah man because i feel like you like if you're in that cycle it, it's hard to break out and like i made us i was so adamant about like having my own work like being just being known for something else like you know, like even like, I mean, I thought I was like known for stuff, but like you know, for a while I was the zombie guy, and it was good to like break out of that for a little bit, and then, you know, then people started just noticing me for some of the fan art that I've done, and then now to be known for the dystopian art guy or whatever, like if I can just now work on the art that I want to create, and you know, really express myself like that's yeah if you it's been that's been a rewarding like thinking about that like like why am i doing these events mm-hmm. like i try to think about that like i mean at least in my case being a new city just trying to get my name out there and all that but instead of using my fan art i'm trying to use like my landscapes and like the dystopian art and then now this the food art that i'm doing as well yeah that that was an interesting pivot to food yeah like, what, what was the process to that like i actually would like to know uh what well, what what caused that yeah it was just uh, like you're like i like oh like this hamburger looks good let me make a drawing of it um i mean well i've always admired like uh how like an anime's um, the way they always showed their food in the cartoons, it was so good. Like, in, like anytime I would see something, I'm like, damn, I want to eat that shit. Like, they just made it look so good. So I've always admired that. And then, um, <clears throat> honestly, I did. I was doing one of the uh, Inktober prompts, and one of the days was crispy. So I'm like, all right, fried chicken. <laughs> <laughs> naturally and then i just uh painted a picture of a two piece and like it's really plain and simple but it was like it was till when i was finished i like sat back and i was i was like you know not to like two more home but i was like this actually looks pretty good like i like i did it a lot i did a lot better than i, than I anticipated um and then uh but like you know no one no one was like I don't know. I'm pretty sure I put it out there that it was like for sale if anyone was interested, but it didn't really draw traction. But then, then I started doing some more recently and I decided at the first market I did this year, I put, I put the fried chicken out in the frame and it was drawing so much attraction. And I was like, what the hell? <laughs> Cause it's different. <laughs> That's why yeah. like no one has different. fried chicken. People were like, you know, complimenting it, but the, I think the only the the reason like no one bought it was just probably because of the price. Like it's you know, it's not cheap, right? It's not crazy, uh, you know, pricey, but it's so you know, so, um, yeah. I mean, I, I and you know what? Also, I I like taking food selfies. It's a guilty pleasure. So my thing was if I'm gonna paint the selfies. It, it kind of just alleviates some of the guilt, <laughs> you know, because <laughs> like, you know, it, it feels gross. I will say it feels gross to be like, oh, wait, don't eat yet. And like, you know, try to take a picture of your, you know, your your wife's plate or whatever. Like it's it's degrading when I when I find myself doing that. But I know then at least, you know, like the, the dish was delicious and the presentation was real nice and you know and thus i deem worthy to paint it like that's the the logic mm. that goes behind it <laughs> no it's nothing crazy but uh yeah and but yeah people seem to gravitate towards it um i mean it, it'd be great if people like well i i mean i i sold a uh cheesecake slice painting um but um yeah i mean if, if i don't know 
how much of a demographic there is like for buyers. I think people will enjoy looking at it. I just don't know if people will like it enough to, you know, want to display it in their kitchen or in their homes. So you got to put a kawaii face on it. It'll probably sell. (laughs) It's also a nice balance to, uh, to, you know, with the tech utopia stuff, because that, that is like mentally and sort of more mentally draining than emotionally. But the dude painting the food is like the one thing I actually when I'm working on it, there's like I there's no stress or, or anxiety behind it. Even like, you know, even like mentioning the, you know, if people want to buy it or not, like that's there, but it's not enough to really like hinder the creative process. Like I'm actually like in a legitimate positive space when I'm painting the food. Oh, good. <laughs> probably because i'm also recollecting the memory behind it too like you know some like a lot of these meals are from like you know anniversary dinners and stuff like that so there's you know they're they're more positive fuel than going to like the dystopian stuff (laughs) yeah yeah Yeah, drawing about our about our hopeless future it's like but look at this amazing pork hog and cheese I made on everything bagel. Isn't this amazing? It's like, you know what they're actually looking at in their visors? This fried chicken. chicken. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they are. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm planning on uh renting some wall space at a uh, local gallery nearby and uh displaying the food. And um yeah, and then just see if, you know, see how that goes and if if I need to, I'll probably, I will might just rotate some of the pieces, maybe throw in um, the tech utopia art, but we'll see. I'm kind of playing it by ear. Yeah, whatever. I mean, whatever works, works. You got to just, you got to just throw shit to a wall and just see what sticks. Yeah. Yeah. And um, also I'm really trying to like hone in on the, you know, just like, in like just enjoying the stuff that I'm creating too. Like, not to say I haven't been, but I don't know, something with the food. I think because maybe because I'm like a foodie also, like there's just something about like the food that genuinely makes me feel good. And then yeah. <laughs> uh, that's yeah. good. You know, because not every <laughs> not every piece has to be this like heady think, you know, think piece, yeah. you know, or that has you know that you have to like question the existence of everything. Some things I'm like, it's just a fucking hamburger. Yeah, or, it, or like it's it was just, just a bird, you know. Yeah, like it was just it was delicious. It had a great presentation. <laughs> Simple as that. You know? Sometimes you know, like you gotta do things just for yourself too, you know. And that's what yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like I'm trying to do a little bit more of that. Um, but you know, you talked about ta- uh, going to classes. I actually went to a um, figure drawing class oh. last last weekend. And uh, it was nice. It was refreshing. Like it, it just like it's just wild because I haven't been to a, I haven't done them since college, man. And that was like twenty years ago. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, just the mindset that just yeah, my whole my whole entire mindset then. You know, I wasn't. I mean, the focus was like half there. I was I was such a bullshitter, but. You know, part of me was like, yeah, I want I do want to get better with my skills. But, you know, like just, you know, com- compared comparing to then as to now, it's like, whoa, like just my frame of mind is is completely different walking in, you know. Right. Like, um, yeah, it was it was it was nice. Uh, there was a <laughs> there was like one observation I made and it's really just stupid. But uh, <laughs> I'm like, you know, because you got your artists that will have their that like to work in headphones, whether just to completely drown everything out or maybe they got their own music. They had music playing. It wasn't distracting, but there were a couple people with their own headgear. And uh, it's just funny because. I'm, you know, all that considered, we're drawing and they're the ones that are like dropping their utensils the most. They're just making all this ruckus with the paper. <laughs> and I'm like, yo, these artists are like, uh, are like noisy as hell, man. 
<laughs> it was just I don't know. It was just a weird observation I had, but I did enjoy it. And um, yeah, I don't know. Like I didn't really have any expectations going in. Like I I I I feel like I was more forgiven about my results at the end of each pose. Like like if something wasn't completed, it's like, all right, well, you know, <laughs> like, cause usually I'm, you know, be, I'll be such a perfectionist where I'm like, damn, I like wanted to like get it, get all the lines that I wanted in there, or, you know, complete the, you know, a sil like get the whole silhouette in there or something. But I was like, nah, this is cool. Like I can deal with this. <laughs> Sometimes it's more about the process than it is about the finished result. Yeah. Yeah, you know, and it's another thing too. You mentioned about like skills. It's kind of odd to you know, because like I know like you and Rick will half heartedly joke like like a drawing of mine that's like fifty percent of like my ability is still higher than most people's one hundred percent. But it takes, believe me, like it takes a lot of time to get to that point, and even with like my like my skill set. I know it's dropped because I was doing a like a quick watercolor practice a few days ago. And I'm like, what the fuck am I doing? It just, it looked bad. Mm. So that's why you got to keep, you know, keep grinding and keep at it, you know, yeah. of like whatever, whatever you do, you know, what, well, you know, whatever material you work in or just techniques. And what I like about the class is like, it forces you one to get out of your comfort zone you know, your actual comfort space, get into yeah. another physical space is not yours mm -hmm. and getting around artists that you're not, that you don't know, you're not familiar with. You don't know them from Adam. They're all different, you know, skill levels and experiences. So kind of liked about those is one, I'm not teaching it. So I'm like, that's great. I love that aspect. I can go in and I am like one of those headphone people, you know, sometimes I drop shit, but most of the time it's just, <laughs> You know, I, I, I do it. Like, I mean, it so, happens, but it, it was just it, so funny, like being in that moment. Right. Like, wow. Like, <laughs> yeah, I think for me, just it helps me to like to drown everything out and I can focus on what I'm doing. And yeah. that's why I think sometimes you drop things or whatever, because oh, I like, totally understand that. But I think it what to, it, it add on. It adds on to what you're saying, like just being in that environment. Like I needed to get out. That's why I signed up. I was like, I need yeah. to be in, a, in another place be surrounded by people i don't know just like be like a regular person again really and right. fucking you know just be out there so you know i'm you know it's an odd observation i thought it was funny ultimately yeah. but you know it's just like oh like because i'm so used to being in my own controlled environment like if something falls i know why right as opposed to like you know it's like it's like a natural yeah it's like why well, keep dropping your eraser you know <laughs> While I'm but, dropping shit too, probably. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's it's nice to just to like to keep your skill set up because I feel like yeah. for me it's kind of like it slid backwards because I haven't really been doing any type of even like bullshit sketching, you know, because usually by especially by like this time now, I'm like I'm usually zonked out, I'm usually asleep. Which is like I'm looking at the clock, I'm like, oh man, I got like a few more minutes and I'm done. <laughs> you know, but you know but with like the um you know like getting in classes and, and that and just pushing yourself i feel like for me i need to be around people who have like higher skill sets and more experience because i, f I feel like i need that push you know because when you're not saying i'm like on the best but when you're constantly like on the higher end around other people you're like okay i don't I'm helping them out more than I'm concentrating on my own thing. Yeah, but, yeah, I feel you. Yeah. You know, just kind of like I just want to learn other things from people because again, you're so closed down to like doing what you're what you're doing, you know, without getting feedback from someone else who has a fresh set of eyes, maybe who doesn't know you and can yeah. give you some experience, you know, some um some observations, some notes about your work that make th that can improve it. And just even like kind of trailing, you know, circling back to like comparing your older work. I was looking through 
I think one of probably I think Instagram or DeviantArt, one of the sites. And I remember seeing this this drawing that I did with like cross hatching, and I read a comment that I wrote of like, "Oh, this looks pretty good." And I look at it now, I'm like, "Oh my god, that's what I thought good was." Oh boy. <laughs> So it's very cringy. You're like, oh my god, like this actually, like this doesn't look fucking. This looks like dog shit. What the fuck? But it's just be- because I was a lot newer at it. I didn't know what I was doing. So yeah, to me it looked good. You know, yeah. now I look at it and go, what? <laughs> you know, like so, so. Like I think for us too, we don't often see a lot of our progress, which is why a lot of people drop out of any like painting class or drawing class because they don't see that progress because they want to see it right away the instant gratification but there'll be there'll be drawings where i'll see that i did maybe six months ago a year ago that i thought were really good and i'm like oh no what could because your brain starts to change you know your process your techniques your methodology changes you know your whole style can kind of change too you know where you know, I was more fond of, you know, doing a lot of n- needling detail that didn't really like just kind of like noodling for just the sake of noodling, which is a bunch of lines to do lines. But now I'm like, oh, I could have just instead of using 15 lines to draw that, I could have used four, mm. you know, well, especially with paint strokes mm. it, where, where I was taking classes. The, the one teacher was like, you could have done this in like two paint strokes and you did like seven kind of see the back and forth. I'm like, Oh, like I get it. And sometimes you don't get it at that time yeah, because you're stuck in your own ways. Mm -hmm. But then you step back and you think about it and you practice what, what they say. Go, Oh, now I understand. Now I get it. So that's why, you know, as artists, you need to be open to different things and, Again, not every not every criticism you get is is a personal attack on you. Yeah, you know, a lot of times, especially if they know how to critique correctly, it's they're looking at their work and looking at the mechanics of it, going, "Okay, what are you trying to accomplish?" Like, for example, if you're trying to do hyper realism and you're you know maybe not working correctly at the correct size, you're working too small, you should work bigger. You're doing, you know, your work's messy, you know, your strokes are too loose. That could be a problem, mm-hmm. you know, or like that's a, like valid criticism. But sometimes you just have to go, OK, I like this. What are you trying to do here? This seems weaker. You know, let's try to marry the two together. And the other thing, too, I was thinking about with like with work is what are you doing with it? You know, like I was looking through a slideshow of some of the high school students' artwork and a lot of it's very nice, very good realism, very nice, but it's like, okay, what are you doing with it though? Mm. Like, what are you doing with that kind of realism? Anyone can learn to draw a paint realistically. It's a skill that you can learn. Just how you hold a brush, how you hold a pencil, how you move it back and forth on a surface. It takes time and practice. But what are you doing with it? You know, like, it's great that you can draw realistically, but who gives a shit? You're not a photocopy machine. You're not, you're not Xerox. Mm. Like, anyone in time can do that. That's why, I like, I kind of started... Str- I, you know, moving away from that kind of direct copying realism of like, okay, how can I start putting messages or communicate different ideas mm. or, or just something into the work to make it more visually appealing? Yeah. So it's not just, oh, look, I made, you know, I copied a picture of a skull with a candle. What are you trying to say with it? What are you trying to do with it? What kind of lighting are you going to use? Mm-hmm. What kind of textures do you want to emphasize? those things became more interesting to me over time versus okay i can copy a picture directly and it looks fantastic like that's great and and again normies you know they love that kind of stuff because they can't do it themselves yeah but to me like finding that balance of doing realism 
in or in doing it differently, whether you're putting in a message, you're having a u- unique composition, you're presenting it differently. That's what makes it to me much more appealing versus just Do copy paste. Copy. Yeah. yeah, straight a straight copy. Straight copies though are great for learning. They're absolutely yeah. fantastic for learning, hundred percent. So it's not to discredit that. But you know, I see people who can, you know, like yeah, you, you can grit out the picture and then do all of your little pencil strokes, paint strokes, pastel strokes, whatever. All right, that's great and wonderful, but it's also boring. What do you yeah. what do you, what makes it different? Like see, that's the there one are many thing I, I don't do. And I mean it's probably I mean it's I think it's obvious, but I, I don't grid my stuff, which is I don't know. It allows me to be okay with like things not being exact. Like right. the, the goals at least to capture as much of the the likeness and the personality of the individual. But um yeah, I, I just that's uh, that's always been like my thing. Because I've always admired the people that are like super hyper realistic uh artists, but you know. I guess when you know like the breakdown of it, like how you got to set it up, then after that, it's a lot of patience. It's a lot of skill too, but I think it's also a lot of patience and just knowing like how to kind of set up the job. Mm. Per se. Like one of the, one of my favorite artists that I follow that's an, that's really good with realism is Greg Ruth. And what he does, he does these really intense graphite pencil drawings. Graphite pencil, it's a f- dumbass. You know, <laughs> <laughs> don't, see, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not even buzzed, and I'm fucking up words. What's also now? It's yeah, now, it's now, late. He's yeah, late. now, yeah. For most people, hour. are like it's it's nine fifty three in in the evening. I'm like, no, like to me, this is like I should be asleep already for like yep. an hour, but. <laughs> But what Greg Bruce does is that a lot of his work, a lot of his graphite illustrations, he combines that realism with like interesting silhouettes or like a lot of like almost like cr- like crossfades within the work. And it's just so one, it's so well done, technically speaking. Mm-hmm. And, and then compositionally, it's just you know, visually arresting. We are just like, wow, like, I don't, I don't get what he does. And the way he combines certain things, it's, it's the closest thing I can think of, of like an actual like mad scientist in like the, like the old universal movies with like the, the bunts and burners going and the beakers flowing mm-hmm. off. It's like just combining a bunch of shit. And you're just like, what's, what's his name? Greg Ruth, it, he's Greg. He's Greg Things on Instagram. It's pretty sick, right? Oh, I like the uh, yeah, I like these like silhouettes, but it's it's his silhouette, but the inside is like uh, looks like a treehouse or something. It's like the structures that make the silhouette of the portrait. Yeah, like he he does a lot of this really... super. Like again, like hyper realism. It's all graphite. Yeah, and he he does things just so clean and so smooth. Shit, you know where where I go, like that's where I want to be. Mm-hmm. You know, and just seeing just like how again on a technical level, like you can't match that. Like, you can't match that. But then just how he uses those. Yeah, you know, like that's it. You know, like those compositional things. Or even like he had a whole series of like, um, um, like African Americans throughout American history who have been persecuted, and it's like blurred p- portraits. So there's just barely enough detail. You can kind of tell who it is, but it's like, it, but it's blurred on purpose, and parts of it are erased. Oh wow! Yeah, you're like, oh man, like this is really good. So. It's just those kind of things where I think has has art like you should be excited to do those things and <clears throat> and like for like for us it's like you have 
have to look and go, okay, I want to get to this level. And it just goes to any any artist. Like you have to one, you have to surround yourself, you know, with people who are better than you, more driven to you, more experienced to kind of grow with them. Yeah. And you know, and also like you should set your your standards up a lot higher. So that even if you still like fall short like you're a lot higher than where you were before right and that's you know what you know what one thing i'm kind of just continuously looking at is how do i get to that point how do i start leveling up there yeah i guess it's just like fine i guess i would imagine the first step is is like making sure your kids sleep yeah make your yeah figure out that sleep schedule get yeah yeah and then and and then it's practice and grinding it out yeah and like and then i guess like finding those people because like i'm on that same type of journey where i'm trying to you know i had this discussion earlier like because we talk about community a lot and i'm like i'm like trying to figure out even more specifically like what about the community like what is it from the community like do i do i want or rather do i need and i mean it's all the things like you said it's like to have someone you know that's better than you uh like you know more skillful or you know you know you want to have people that are supportive that keep you accountable uh that are also objective so you know i'm kind of fine trying to like find those people that are also artists like you know so but the problem is you know that nowadays yeah again like with social media everyone's you know different schedules and you know whether or not they they have like the space for perhaps a new friend or whatever like yeah there's like so many other questions that have to be answered you know to really be able to like pull it off right Mm -hmm. and uh i guess it's just it's just more challenging nowadays to you know even though we have the convenience of social media and my worry has been that i feel like you know i love podcasting it's been the opera it's been my way of keeping in touch with you and and like other other my friends but it's like there is still like this line like um what's the word like sometimes with other people it feels like the friendship is more like parasocial like you know you just you know because even if you're just seeing what they're posting on a daily and sure you may dm here and there every now and then sharing stuff but it's like i i really i'm like trying to strive to have like to have active friendships (laughs) friendships <laughs> that are also you know like-minded they strive for the same thing as i am you know they're fellow creatives but yeah it, it you know again the goal is to find like the the people that will help elevate you you know and yeah it's tough especially when you have an ego if you had e- like like i have a big ego so i'm always battling that and um but yeah, it's really important to have those things, like those types of people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, to have like yeah. And all about I know about the ego. I've had to tear myself down a few times, you know, yeah. to, to get to that point of like, I know what I know, but I want to. I'm I I am open to different things, and that's how I become better. Yeah. You know, trying different things too that you never thought you would do too. Like like I said, numerous times in this excuse me on this show where i never thought i'd be doing birds or botanical art or any Mm. other crap i had no idea or i'd be working in watercolors or i'd be interested in doing you know oil paints or oil pastels or whatever it is you know you just have to be open to it and just just you know, always strive to do the best you can and you know failing is part of the process it's part of the journey it's part of learning you know failing is perfectly fine as long as you understand why you're failing at it and how to troubleshoot and improve it so yeah. I, I mean like i said there's all these different things that go into like into this whole field 
you know, and it's always is wanting to be better, you know, and, and improving and just being different to stand out. Yeah. Even like with, you know, selling things like right now. Yeah. It'd be great if people commissioned me to do, you know, animal portraits or whatever, or even drawing man thing or Godzilla or whatever. But, you know, it's like, I got to step back and be a little selfish and do, and do things for myself. Yeah. And, you know, just kind of take a step back and, and, and get and learn it and learn different ways, different techniques, different materials, different methods to get better. Yeah. So it's, you know, that's basically more or less kind of what I'm attempting to do now because I kind of realize like I need a hard reset. I need to kind of get myself back in there, you know back into just creating on a regular basis you know stop making the excuses like oh my kid's not sleeping oh this is that it's like yeah they're all, they're all excuses after a while mm. you know so yeah they're valid or whatever but I can make the time to do it it's just I don't yeah. so well I was, that was going to say that brought that brought up the question of like the uh, <clears throat> trying to adapt to uh, the active lifestyle like obviously i'm sure that that's been difficult but uh is that also still part of the goal too is to just to i mean like you know obviously you don't have to do anything crazy but like just to get yourself at to an active level oh yeah 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 i'm like looking to with the uh the <clears throat> garden state watercolor society sent out a thing about two shows and exhibits and i look through them like i could probably like i should do this I, I it gives me again something else to work on as well so i'm not just sitting here staring at the same blank paper oh like, no but i'm talking about like exercise because the last time you're on oh, here, oh like running and stuff yeah yeah like just okay. having like a more active lifestyle um, so. yeah i mean luckily you know you know when you hear when you hear the two words daddy tickles you, you, you know you got to go in and move around of course and take, and run, and, you know <laughs> like or just doing things like walking my dog every day running i'll probably get back into eventually when everyone kind of settles into a, a, a routine of sleeping and i can sneak mm -hmm. in a run there and right. you know i've i've made the effort to move around as much as i can even at work where i just kind of walk around the classroom or I'll walk around the building a few times or park yeah. further away so I can you know get those steps in and all that. But just that keeping active, keeping, you know, physically active. Right. That's also kind of been that was on the way, you know, it was kind of going to the wayside of like, oh, I'm not gonna I don't have to run today. It's windy or it's, uh, it's yeah. raining, it's snow or whatever. But it's like, no, I should I have to do this, you know, because again, I've realized too, like I have to be physically active as well. It helps yeah. to keep you know, yeah, keep just, mine going yeah exactly and like that's the thing too like i i always try to clarify like it never it's like you know the intention isn't to like go hard or whatever but it's just to again to to real you know yeah clear your head you know it's great you know therapy it's uh and um you know it releases those uh those positive chemicals you know like those feel good chemicals so any way to get that and, and, you know, however intensity, you know, you decide to do it, but um, yeah, I mean, any form of it's great. And like even small increments, right. Even like just doing what you're doing right now, that's like, that's a plus it, it, help, it, it could like help rewire your brain a little bit and kind of like, you'll start getting comfortable being uncomfortable, you know, like. <laughs> Like, yeah. I don't want to do this, but I I I know the reward of it at the right. end. Of that what, what 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 do they call it? Swallow the frog? <clears throat> is what it is that whatever that phrase is, I think. Oh, I swallow, don't know. Swallow. I don't it basically it. you're just like, all right, you don't want to do it, but fuck it, I want to do it because I'm gonna feel bad if I don't, kind of thing. Oh, okay. so, <laughs> I, think it's called, I think it's called swallow the frog. That's what they call it. It's like you just you do things early in the morning. You you do things early to get it done out the way and you realize like you feel better for doing it versus like yeah. not doing it so right. yeah yeah so, well I, I, yeah. At, th at this point the brain's like shutting down i'm like all right i know <laughs> I, i'm <laughs> repeating <laughs> myself and i know i do that a lot but this is the point well, where i'm like all right now i'm just we, we, we still man through it. it it's all good um 
yeah, man. Hey, look, I'm glad. I'm glad we got to like catch up. Absolutely, it's always a good hang. And uh, yeah, obviously, when when the schedule starts to balance itself out, hopefully, um, you know, we can uh, round up. You know, get get the old boys together. See how we're because I ha- I haven't really been in touch with Rickman as much. Yeah. I know he was trying to get his living situation settled. So, you know, hopefully things are good on his end, and that hopefully we can all get together again. Yeah, that'd be good. One of these bitch bitch fests. Mm-hmm. All right, brother. Well, get some sleep. You I surely will. deserve it. Hard working man, father, husband. So. Yeah, man, I'm glad we got to catch up, though. Yeah, I am, too. All right. Well, any any last words for the audience before I bring this thing home? No, I don't have any encouraging, you know, diagnosis. <laughs> no, the the queen, last one was real no, good. No, I don't have anything. Artists who's listening to this show, just keep practicing your craft, but also don't be afraid to diversify. Learn different crafts. Grow your visual vocabulary. Learn your skills. Look to your past. Look to the inspiration. Look to your favorite artists, but look who inspired them. Because you will learn a lot about why your favorite artists made the, the work they did. And that might inspire you to do something different. There's nothing wrong with making a buck and doing popular work and fan art. There's nothing wrong with that. I've made a career out of it. Don't be afraid to explore on your own and just keep pushing yourself. Just because you're not ready for something now doesn't mean you're not gonna be ready for it six months or a year from now. And understand that you are going to fail at things. You're gonna fall behind on it. That's part of the journey. Keep pushing. We need artists. We need people who do great things, weird things, comforting things. Please join us. There's plenty for everyone this year. I'm, I'm sorry, everyone. I, I gave that up. I gave that out last time. I'm all, I shot my load. I'm done. He, yeah. I mean, that one was was folded, was so it's okay. Yeah. You get a pass. Oh, thank you. Um, all thank I'm you. gonna say, uh, besides you know, besides thanking everyone who has been tuning in, uh, don't forget to hit that follow and subscribe button if you enjoyed the podcast. And again, if you want to support your boys' artwork. Uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel and or follow me on social media at Art of G Toronto. All that will be in the show description. You can also follow Nick on Instagram and Facebook. Uh, Nick, Instagram is what? Just Nick Makoviak Art? Uh, it's the Art of Nick Makoviak. Uh, my apologies. Yeah, and what's the, what's the Facebook one then? Oh, no, no, it, no. Instagram is Nick Makoviak and then Facebook is the Art of Nick Makoviak. There so. you go. I will, of course, make sure links are in the description below. But yeah, please support support us, uh, local artists. You know, you you hear our struggles, and and you know, we we talk about the grind all the time. So you guys uh, will be more inclined to buy original art. <laughs> Indeed, yes. <laughs> and with that said, uh, stay safe, stay healthy, stay driven. And hopefully we will catch you all on the next one. Peace out.